Hey guys, right here I have a 2015 Mercedes-Benz V250D And today, I'm going to make a startup and full vehicle tour video of it Show you the features, inside and out So, here is the key, let's go ahead and start it up first. The W447V class comes with an electromechanical rack and pinion power steering system. The steering wheel on this V class is leather wrapped with sport grips at the 10 and 2 o'clock positions. The sides of the steering wheel does have a perforated pattern and there is white stitching going around the inner rim. The V250 Bluetech does come standard with Mercedes's 7G Tronic Plus 7-speed automatic transmission. The transmission is controlled via the direct select gear lever located to the right of the steering column. To shift into drive, put your foot on the brake and pull the lever down all the way. For neutral, if in drive, push the lever up once and if in reverse, pull the lever down once. Push the lever up all the way to engage reverse. Once in reverse, the reverse camera comes on and the parking sensors activate. The reverse camera does have guidance lines that help one park and by using the command knob down below, you are able to select two different views for the camera as well as adjust the brightness. Back in drive, you are able to use the pedal shifters located behind the top two steering wheel spokes to shift through the seven gears manually. The right pedal upshifts while the left pedal downshifts. For park, hit the button right at the end of the gear lever. To the left of the command knob, you can find the switch for the Agility Select driving modes. There are four modes to choose from, Eco, Comfort, Sport and Manual. Eco allows for increased fuel efficiency by changing gears at lower revs while reducing the output of the air conditioning system, heated rear windscreen and seat heating. Comfort is the default mode without any changes to the car and provides the driver and passengers with a comfortable ride. Sport changes the characteristics of the car by making the engine respond faster to the throttle and the transmission shifts faster. Manual mode allows for full manual control of the transmission and lets drivers shift as they wish. Eco mode is off by default on the manual mode but it is turned on on the other three modes. Safety features standard on the V-Class includes 6 airbags, anti-lock braking system with electronic brake force distribution and brake assist, electronic stability program, collision prevention assist, attention assist, hill start assist, an alarm system with immobilizer, tire pressure monitoring system, and isofix child seat anchor points for both rows of seats at the back. 
Now, let's turn on the hazards, lights, rear fog light, take a look at the engine, and roll down the driver's side window. This V-Class rides on 18-inch, 5 twin-spoke silver-painted alloy rims wrapped in Goodyear Eagle F1 Asymmetric 2 245-45R18 tyres. The suspension gets McPherson struts in front and a semi-trailing arm rear setup. For the brakes, the front gets ventilated discs, while the rear gets solid discs. The V-Class is Mercedes' multi-purpose vehicle or MPV. The V-Class also does get a cargo van version called the Vito. The first generation W638 V-Class or Vito was introduced in 1996 and was on sale until 2003. The second generation also known with the W639 codename was introduced in 2003 and was on sale until 2014. The second generation dropped the V-Class name in favour of the Viano name for the MPV version while the cargo van version retained the Vito name. For the third generation which debuted in 2014, the V-Class name returned alongside the Vito. The third generation is known as the W447 generation. The V-Class and Vito is available with a wide variety of engines, transmissions, body styles and seat configurations. Under the bonnet of this V250 Bluetech is Mercedes's tried and tested OM651 DE22LA 2.1L dual overhead cams, 16 valves, turbo diesel inline 4 engine with common rail direct injection technology. In the V250, this engine produces 187 horsepower at 3800 rpm and 440Nm of torque between 1400 and 2400 rpm. There is an overboost function that allows the V-Class to have 201 horsepower and 480Nm of torque. 0 to 100 takes 9.1 seconds and the top speed is 206 km per hour. With a fuel tank of approximately 57 litres with a 10 litre reserve tank, combined fuel consumption for the V250 Blue Tank is 6 litres per 100 km. 157 grams of carbon dioxide is produced per kilometre and the V-Class is rear wheel drive. The new V-Class was launched in 2014 with sales starting the same year. While the V-Class primarily replaces the Viano, it also sort of replaces the more luxurious and smaller R-Class. The W447 V-Class is available in compact, long and extra long wheelbases. Exterior features of this V-Class includes automatic halogen reflector headlights, halogen daytime running lights, rear fog light, front and rear parking sensors, active parking assist, body colored door handles and side mirrors, indicators on the side mirrors, LED rear number plate lights, and the spare tire located under the car itself.
You do get quite a large storage bin down there together with a bottle holder and your speaker. A bit more storage right here. And right up here, you do have your mirror controls, window controls. The front two windows are fully automatic in both directions. The rear two windows are actually vents, so they just pop out instead of roll down. And you do have your window lock. You do have your central locking buttons right next to the interior door handle on the driver's side. And right here, you do have your three stage heated seats for the driver. Adjustable aircon vents. To the right of the headlight switch, you have the lever to adjust the brightness of the interior as well as the lever to adjust the level of the headlight. Right here, you have the button to turn off your parking sensors. And this button is for your um, lane keep assist. You do have your electronic parking brake down here. I'll show you how it works in a moment. Mercedes-Benz floor mats Mercedes-Benz door sill for this side and the driver's seat in this V250 does get full manual adjustments this knob controls your seat back this lever controls your seat height this knob controls your seat inclination and this lever down here controls your seat position. All right. So let's go ahead and see how she revs. As mentioned earlier on, the parking brake is located down here, it is electronic and it is currently engaged. To disengage it, put your foot on the brake and pull the lever out. To engage it, simply push the lever back in. This V-Class comes with a tri-zone automatic climate control system with all of your front controls located right here. You do have a separate set of fan speed and temperature controls for the rear. But for the front controls, you do have your driver's side temperature, different modes, fan speed, automatic, front and rear defrost, air conditioning, recirculation, your rear air conditioning, and your passenger side temperature. The display is shared with the infotainment display located right above.
And if you hit the menu button in the middle, it actually brings up your um, climate control information on the in full screen instead. So you do have your airflow, climate mode, temperature, air distribution. You do notice a row of menus down below where you can activate your air conditioning, climate control and sync mode. Sync means if you have it turned on, the driver's side will control the controllable options from um, the driver's side, but if you turn it off, each side will have their individual controls. This V-Class comes with the Audio 20 head unit with various media connectivity options, a high resolution 7 inch color display, the command knob with a touchpad and 6 speakers for the sound system. I must say, for a stock sound system, the speakers in the V-Class do sound quite good. The display right above is actually controlled using your set of controls down here. You do have the knob that goes up, down, left, right, pushes down for enter. You do have your return button and favorite button. And you also do have this touchpad where you can um, navigate through the menus. You also do have your return option and favorite button. Right now, we are in your main Bluetooth audio streaming menu with your current song playing information with the um, artist, album, song duration, current device connected name, song title. You can go back a song, go forward a song just by clicking the knob to the left or to the right or twisting the knob to the left or to the right. But if you click the knob down, you bring up your list of options. Now. The command system works in a three-tier format, so you do have your main menus right above, submenus in the middle, and the options for the submenu down below. The options for the Bluetooth audio streaming menu include your options where you can change your audio device, play mode, your volume, and activating your traffic announcements. You can also play pause, select a device, and go through your sound system settings with your bass mid treble, balance and fader, preset equalizers, or rather your e equalizer, if we go up, when media is highlighted you can select between bluetooth audio streaming, information on media, cd, media interface, And under radio, you can access your FM AM menu, look at your list of available radio stations in the area, perform a manual tuning search, so on and so forth. Under telephone, you can dial a number, connect the device, your telephone options, import contacts and all that. You can look at your call lists, phone book, And lastly, your vehicle settings, system settings, with your language, display, rear view camera settings, activating Bluetooth, resetting the system back to factory settings, setting your time, and turning the display off. You can select your different options right here. Illumination, locking, lights, folding the mirrors in automatically upon um, locking the car, you 
your consumption information, and your owner's manual. You can even set the time right here. And that's about it. Right here you do have your driving mode control as shown earlier. And right here you do have your volume wheel, your power button, and the button to activate or deactivate your auto start stop system. If you do have the system activated, the engine will momentarily shut off when you arrive at a stop such as a traffic light or a traffic jam to save that extra bit of petrol or diesel depending on what the car is running on. Right here you do have your CD player, it is MP3 compatible, eject button, and your shortcut buttons for your navigation, radio, media, telephone, your um, vehicle settings, and your hazard light button as shown earlier. Front quarter windows. Power folding mirrors. Central locking. On the steering wheel, the left, sorry, the right spoke houses your audio controls with your volume, your on hook off hook buttons for the Bluetooth telephone system, and your voice control. The left spoke houses your um, controls for your multi information display located within the instrument cluster. Right now, you do have your mileage and trip meter, range and um, instant fuel consumption, driving data from the last startup, driving data from the last reset, and these driving data include your distance travel, elapsed time, average fuel consumption, and average speed. If you hit the home button, you can go through between trip, radio, media, telephone, assistance graphics, service indicators and settings. Hit the OK button to select that option and you can, under settings, you can select your assistance settings, instrument cluster settings, vehicle settings and resetting the system back to factory settings. Under service, you do have your messages, your add blue information, tire pressure monitoring system, service indicator and an and engine oil level. Assistance graphics includes your, um, obviously your assistance graphics and your as attention assist information. And that's about it. Your gear lever on the right stalk, as shown earlier. And on the top left stalk, you do have your wiper and indicator controls. Your cruise control is on the bottom left stalk. The steering wheel in this car is tilt and telescopic. You adjust it using this lever right here. Right here you do have a couple of cup holders, storage, a power outlet to the left, and a couple of USB ports to the right. A pass through to the back, and you do have armrests for the driver and front passenger. Auto dimming, rear view mirror, and right above you do have your interior lights. You can turn on the lights for the rear as well. The lights are LED powered. You do have a sun visor with a vanity mirror for the driver's side and a light.
and a grip handle for the driver. Alright! So I guess that's it for the startup. We can turn it off right now. And continue with the rest of the tour. Mercedes-Benz door sill for the back as well. You can get the back seats of the V-Class configured in many ways. You can move it around, um, fold it down for extra boot space or um, remove it for again extra boot space or if you want to carry big items. You do have storage pockets on the front seat backs, armrests for the middle row. It is quite comfortable back here. Seats are nice and um, soft. You can have a conversation with your third row passengers or if you do have the seats um, facing forward, you can um, have captain chairs looking forward. You can walk to the front and sit in the front passenger seat if there's no one sitting there. But for the rear, you do get grip handles with hooks and aircon vents for all four sides at the back. You do have privacy glass for the rear windows and the rear windscreen to give that extra bit of um, security back here. You do have your speaker grill right here, a bit of storage, and your rear vent control. More storage down there or a bottle holder depending on what you use it for. The rear hatch is powered and you can open it up via two ways. There is a touchpad beneath the Mercedes badge on the rear hatch itself and there is also the button on the key. The boot space in the V-Class with all the rear seats installed stands at an impressive 1030 litres. 
Without the rear seats, this value can go up to 4630 litres. You do have a power outlet in the boot with a boot light as well and also a partition to keep smaller items above and larger items down below. You can remove the partition if you wish to do so and that partition also houses some baskets to store items in. The glass rear windscreen can be opened separately from the rear hatch so you don't have to open up the rear hatch every time to load something small in. If I forgot to mention earlier on, you do have grip handles on the B pillar. As on the driver's side, you do have quite a large storage bin down there together with a bottle holder and your speaker and more storage right here and right here you do have your window control The front passenger seat does get full manual adjustments as well with the same set of adjustments as the driver's side Also a bit of storage, which I forgot to show you on the driver's side. Mercedes-Benz door sill and floor mats for this side as well. Lockable glove box. It is of a nice size. Grip handle for the front passenger. And the sun visor on the front passenger side does get a vanity mirror and a light as well.
Alright, so let's start it up with the door closed. Alright, so that's it for the startup and full vehicle tour video of this 2015 Mercedes-Benz V250D. Thanks for watching and goodbye.